I'm Tad, you're watching Tips for Technicians. Today we're looking at E416, which is compressor stop high discharge temperature. This air is a protection for the compressor when the discharge temperature is too high. I'm going to talk to you about what I found, which was the problem, which was this uh, stepper motor here. I'm going to talk to you and I'm going to show you how to check this. Uh, we're going to talk about what an EEV is and then I'm going to go through a list of diagnostic steps that you're going to take to be able to figure out this issue. Let's get started. EEV is an electronic expansion valve, is a digitally pulsed motor coil driven expansion valve regulating the flow of refrigerant through a heat exchanger coil. So troubleshooting error codes E416. Let's talk about how we're going to diagnose this problem. All right, so does the system run before getting this error? You need to know if the system runs before getting this error. Okay, if it runs and then it gets this error, or if the error appears right away, okay? If the system appear, if the error appears right away, then you need to locate the sensor plug designation and ohm sensor, okay? This is a 200 kilo ohm sensor. And what sensor they're talking about is the discharge temperature sensor. Your plug is gonna be CN403. You're going to get your multimeter and you're gonna set it on ohms. And then you're gonna go by this chart here to figure out if you have a bad sensor. If, you're, if your temperature outside is 68 degrees, ohms should read 242.5. There's a max and then there's a minimum around that temperature for the ohms, the kilo ohms that you're going to read. Uh, discharge temperature sensor, 200 kilo ohm. It says use chart. This is the chart. Okay, pause the video, use this chart. Going back, it says if sensor is out of range, replace. If sensor is within range, reseat connection and test. If error occurs, again, replace the outdoor PCB. So if you check sensor, it's in range. You might have changed that outdoor PCB if the system runs before error. Okay, so say it's running and then it has the error. Okay, check the running pressure. Over or under charge could cause this. If so, then you're going to evacuate all your refrigerant. Then you're going to recharge with a standard factory charged. You're going to go by service plate for that. So verify outdoor fan motors running. Make sure coil is clean. If in heat mode, make sure indoor fan is coming on because of course, if indoor fan doesn't come on, it's gonna build up high head. Uh, coming on and filter is clean. Make sure your filter's clean. I've had this happen. Uh, filter be dirty. That was all that was wrong. If not, refer to E154 troubleshooting. Make sure there is no obstructions in front of indoor, outdoor units. So indoor fans not running in heat mode. Filter is dirty. In cooling mode, um, could be something else. Let's talk about the EEV coil, how to check it. And then I'm going to show you how to make those checks. But 46 ohms is what you're looking for on each one of the wires going to that stepper motor. Let me show you with a meter. I have my meter set to ohms. There's the display so you can see the readout. And then this right here is the plug. We're going to check from the blue wire, which is your common, to your black, your yellow, your orange, and your red. And we're gonna read out 46 ohms. I want you to pay attention to the display and tell me what you see as I go through and read. I'm going blue to black, 47, that's a good read. Blue to yellow, 47, that's a good read. Blue to red, 4.6, that's not a good read. Let's go on to blue to orange. So all of the wires coming from the stepper motor are reading good readings around 46. They're all reading about 47. And then you have your red wire to your blue, which is reading 4.5. So we have a short there. And that means that this stepper motor, this coil is bad. And it's got a little bit of rust in here and doesn't look too too pleasant, but this is the problem. And what was happening was that we had high discharge temperature because your EEV was not operating correctly. It was flooding or either flooding or starving the evaporator coil. And that was causing in cooling mode, the suction pressure to go to zero to a vacuum. And then that was causing in heating mode, the head pressure to go to 600. So let's talk for just a minute and then I'll end the video. 
So before I got to the EEV stepper motor and was able to determine this was the problem that has been causing these issues with this unit from day one, I ended up having a bad compressor because too much high discharge temperature caused the compressor to fail. And before that, I had a bad PCB. So I could have went to this in the beginning if I'd have got a call from the homeowner early on and maybe could have been able to figure this out. But I had to get a bad compressor plus a PCB before I ever got to this stepper motor. I want you guys to be able to find the problem faster. So that's why I'm putting this on here. I'm also putting this video on here so that I don't forget that if I have an error code E416 in the field on a Samsung HVAC system, that it could be the stepper motor, the coil that drives that EEV. And it's not just the discharge temperature sensor or an outdoor PCB. Remember, if you do have this problem in the field and there's an E416, that if it happens right away without the unit running, it could be the bad discharge sensor. You need to use the chart that I have in the video, or it could be that there is a bad outdoor PCB. You're gonna to have to make those checks using the resistance charts. If it runs for a while and then it happens in the heating mode, it could be the indoor fan is not running, blowing that hot air and it's building up heat, or it could be the filter. If it's happening in cooling mode, then it could be something totally different like your outdoor fan not running and you need to check your outdoor fan or it is your coils not clean outdoors could be charged you need to factory charge it if you think it is the charge i hope this video helps you in the field and if you want any more videos check out tips for technicians thanks for watching